We all know that plants need water to survive and perform well in the garden. Drip irrigation is one of the best ways to deliver water, both because it's very efficient and it's also very good for the crop as well. Using drip irrigation helps keep the leaves of the plants dry, which helps reduce diseases, and is also incredibly conservative in terms of the volume of water that you require. Now there are two different types of drip irrigation systems. There are low pressure drip systems that use drip tape, otherwise known as T-tape, and there's high pressure systems that use more rigid polytubing with emitters built in or emitters that you can install yourselves. Probably the biggest advantage of using a low pressure drip system is that the materials are very inexpensive and it's very simple to put together. You can buy a 7,500 foot roll of drip tape for about $150 to $175. So you can imagine that you can buy a roll, put it in the garage, and have it for many years to come in the garden or in the community area. But it does run at low pressure, and so you have to use a pressure regulator to knock the pressure down from what's standard coming out of your hose or faucet. Typical water pressures coming out of a residential faucet or a hydrant might be anywhere from 50 to 75 PSI. But a drip system that runs on low pressure requires 10 to 15 PSI. We typically use small PVC pressure regulators in order to knock back the pressure of the water coming in, and that'll help to ensure that you get good consistent watering throughout the length of the drip tape. High pressure drip systems are actually more typical of landscapes, but they also work extremely well in the vegetable garden or in a community garden. They're made out of much more rigid and durable polytubing, and they have what are called pressure compensating emitters inside of them, which means that no matter what pressure the system is running at, the same volume of water and the same rate of water is delivered to the plants. So in this way, that makes them really easy to use and very versatile in the garden without having to install pressure regulators and do other fancy plumbing work in order to install them. Another major advantage of using the high pressure drip systems is that because the material is much more durable, they're much less prone to damage by rodents and other things that can chew holes in them. And this can be a big problem as well in drip systems if you have a lot of mice or other things in the garden that like to get after your water. In addition, because it's so rigid, you can also reuse that high pressure system over and over again. So it's best recommended, especially if you're in an area that has permanent beds or raised beds, the high pressure system may be better suited for that type of garden. The biggest disadvantage to using the high pressure system is that it's just much more expensive than the low pressure systems that run off of drip tape. Uh, typically drip tubing with pressure compensating emitters costs about seven to eight times more per linear foot than a drip tape does. If you're gardening in a small area, you may be able to actually save some money because you don't have to buy as much materials uh, in order to install it. So putting together a drip system is relatively simple and typically is about the same between low pressure systems and high pressure systems. Now the first thing that you have to do is install your pressure regulator. And again, this is gonna be a small PVC pressure regulator. They're typically in the neighborhood of 15 to $20. And you want this at the very front end of the line or the top end of the header pipe. It's also a good idea to have an inline screen filter or a spin filter built into the header line as well to make sure to catch any other particulates or dirt matter that may come through the piping because they could potentially clog up the emitters of the drip tape or the drip tubing. The next thing that you want to do is to assemble your header pipe. And the header pipe is basically the poly pipe that runs along the end of the garden that distributes the water to each of the drip tubes or drip tapes. Once you've laid down the header pipe, go ahead and punch holes in it in order to make spots for the connectors where your drip tape or your drip tube might attach. Typically a punch tool is very common and these can be purchased wherever you buy your drip irrigation supplies. Next you put your connector in and these usually pop in very simply. Sometimes there are reverse threaded couplers that actually help tighten it down to the header pipe as well. Once you've done this you want to go ahead and install the drip tape or the drip tube onto the connector piece and you'll insert the tape over top of the barb and then run that reverse threaded coupler back up it in order to tighten it down and get a good water seal. Finally, you need to terminate the line and this can be done in a couple different ways depending on whether you're using drip tubing or drip tape. For the rigid drip tubing, then we typically use a permanent fixed end coupler that actually goes on and acts as a plug for the end of the pipe. With drip tape, you can do it much more simply and more inexpensively. All you need to do is cut a small piece of drip tape, one to two inches long, then fold up that drip tape three times and insert that small piece of drip tape over top of it just like a sleeve. In order to terminate the header pipe, you can do a couple different things as well. You can buy pre-manufactured end caps for it, 
that attach with a reverse threaded coupler, or you can very simply just crimp the end of it and use a small coupler connector to hold that crimp together. Even baling wire can even work just to keep that water from going anywhere. Soaker hoses are another type of way to apply water, although they're not really the same as a drip system. Soaker hoses do work very effectively at watering and keeping water off the leaves of the plants, which is very advantageous. However, they typically put out a much higher flow rate than most drip or trickle systems. And one of the big disadvantages of this is you can't have a very long soaker hose that provides consistent water from one end all the way to the other. Otherwise, they're excellent for use in germinating seed and other things where you need to deliver a fair amount of water very quickly. Drip irrigation is a great way to conserve water and is also one of the more beneficial ways to water the plants. The crop really enjoys trickle irrigation as it keeps the leaves dry and keeps the water in the root zone. For more information, visit your local Extension office or visit our website at kansasgreenyards.org.